I am really excited today because we get to look at the Xiaomi 12S Ultra and answer the question, is this Chinese market phone worth importing? Because I'm personally looking for a new phone right now. The cool thing about this phone is not just that it is like flagship specs, like all that's great. And those are all things that you'd expect from a flagship. Here's the phone. Very cool. Look at this camera bump. Oh my God. Full disclosure, I've actually been using this phone for about three days. Took it home over the weekend because I couldn't wait. And I have a lot to say about it. First one I appreciate, this camera bump is gigantic, even though they're not actually really comparable devices. Look at this camera bump. I actually, like, I really like the design aesthetic. You'll see that this phone is in the corner here, branded Leica. And for those of you who've watched any other phone videos that I've done, I'm a fan of Leica. We had their smartphone in a couple of months ago. It, that was a Japanese exclusive, but it was basically a rebrand of the Sharp, I think, Aquios R6. And it also had a one inch sensor, like that phone. On the topic of one inch sensors, just to quickly get this out of the way. Yes, I understand guys, one inch sensor are not actually one inch in diameter. If you want like a full detailed explanation, the other people have done videos, Marquez has a video on this, but basically the short version is the naming comes from old video tubes that were actually about 1.5 times the size of the actual imaging sensor that they were projecting onto. That doesn't matter guys, because this sensor is still huge for a smartphone. So I'm really hyped on the camera on this phone, but it does have a lot of other really good redeeming qualities to it. One of them being the Harman Kardon sound system. There's also a good example of how good this display looks. Like that full brightness. Sounds pretty good. There's so much to talk about this camera. I don't actually have a lot of time to talk about the specs. <laughs> so if you want, they're pretty flagship specs, Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. This uses Xiaomi's MIUI 13 on Android 12. There's a lot of pre-installed Chinese apps that you can get rid of. So if you are importing this phone, that's something to contend with. One of the other weird things I found is in the camera app, you go over to the settings, motion tracking focus, and motion capture. Two settings that supposedly help you with the autofocus are not on by default. Motion tracking for focus allows you to double tap the screen and then it'll lock on to your subject. So we'll test that later. But again, I didn't have it on all weekend. And then motion capture, which tracks motion to, to minimize blur on the photos of children, pets, and other active subjects. This was also off by default. I didn't actually get a chance to try this with my son, but with the magic of editing, here are some of the photos I took this evening that have this feature on and you guys can judge them for yourself. I unfortunately can't judge them in the moment right now, but we will try some stuff later. We've got a video mode, portrait mode, night, all that stuff is standard. There's a bunch of other modes here. You could do like, there's a vlog mode, slow mode. I wanna try the slow motion. There's a super moon mode. And then there's that multi-camera mode that I actually tried in the last phone video that I did where you have every camera on the smartphone going at once. And I think, okay, it looks like you can choose two. Here we go. And then I can record video on both the selfie camera and the external camera. And if I do that, there's Andrew, there's Colton. And I'm also looking at myself, which I don't know why you'd need this, but it's cool that you can do it. And it can be any camera, so it doesn't matter. So in the photo mode, you have filters that you might actually use. So there's Leica Vivid, and then there's Leica Natural, and there's Leica Black and White Natural. 50 millimeter swirly bokeh, and you have 90 millimeter soft focus. There's a macro mode tilt shift. Weird. That's kind of gimmicky. Oh, there's Riley. Hey, you ready? Am I ready for what? We're gonna take photos of you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take some new photos. Outside, with Riley. But first, a word from our sponsor. Magic Spoon. Thanks to Magic Spoons for sponsoring this video. Magic Spoon offers delicious and healthy cereals for your next midnight snack. Their variety pack contains four tasty flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. With zero grams of sugar, 12 to 14 grams of protein, and only four to five grams of carbs per serving, each serving is only 140 calories and they're keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and low carb. And if you don't like it for any reason, you can get a full refund with no questions asked thanks to their 100% happiness guarantee. So click the link below and use code short circuit for $5 off your next order or go to magicspoon.com slash short circuit for $5 off today. Let's go outside, take some photos. Hi. Hey Riley, perfect timing. Okay. You ready to do? Let's do a couple of photos just with the Leica authentic mode. And then I'm gonna do Leica vibrant. 
The mode chain's really easy, especially when you have it in this grip. Motion tracking and track focus are on. So now I'm gonna double tap Riley's face. Okay, now it should be fully tracking him. This track there. What? What? Okay. <laughs> That'll be an interesting test on if any of those or how many of them are in focus. So just walk towards me pretty close. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is like a natural. And then this is like a black and white natural. You see that? Like it's got like a, I don't know, a film vibe maybe. Look, play. look hipster. <laughs> and then let's try the 50 millimeter swirly bokeh. Oh, that'll be interesting. So this swirly. Yeah. It, it, wow. It's like really doing its best to map you. Wow. It definitely likes it more when your face is in shot. In 720p, this camera can do up to 3,840 FPS. What? <laughs> oh the four that holy i mean we're only looking at it on the phone but that that's, is so slow that is so cool and go <laughs> <laughs> what? that's crazy look at your hair i'm gonna do a quick 8k video unfortunately it's at 24 fps and this video you're watching is gonna be in 30 fps whoa whoa look at this Amazing, I love nature. Hey, you're doing a great job. <laughs> the image stabilization is impressive, that's for sure. Oh, lost you there for a second. Lost Don't lose me, Maybe stay on me, Brandon. I don't want to get lost in the upside down. Whoa, ah, it's so bright. Okay, there we go, we're tracking motion now. Oh. Tracking my hands. Tracking your face, well, let's stay still. I got something to say to you. Oh, that was pretty good. And then on the way out and then back in. Oh, oh, pretty good. Most of what I'm testing here is with the main shooter because that is the camera with the one inch sensor. We're transferring the photos and the video that we just did and from the weekend onto my laptop right now so we can take a look at everything. But in the meantime, I just wanna talk about the actual like build of this phone because I, I, didn't, I didn't mention it at all. This phone might actually be the best feeling phone I've ever held in my life because it's got this awesome silicone leather, apparently eco-friendly, not that I don't think that matters to a lot of people out there, but my M10 has a similar texture and softness to this phone. And on top of that, while looking amazing, it doesn't pick up fingerprints at all. So it's actually also practical. I would be scared to run this phone caseless, but you could because it also has IP68 waterproofness. And man, this feels good. Like I, it feels like you're using an actual camera. That is a good experience. So this is the first time I'm looking at all these photos from the weekend and now. So there are a bunch of bees flying around this bush that were just like pollinating it. And I wanted to see how the phone would do in taking photos of the autofocus, with the autofocus of these bees. And I was constantly pressing at certain moments. I wasn't using the tracking feature because I wasn't aware of the double tap at the time, but the autofocus still seemed to be doing its job to a point. So in this first photo that I attempted, I'm gonna actually just lower the exposure by like seventh of a stop. That B is, I don't think quite in focus, but it's not bad, it's close. On the whole, on the wide, this photo actually feels very nice. Now we continue this one. So I actually, I lowered the exposure on this shot. This shutter speed was one over 800, which is much faster than one over 180, which is some of the other shots. And dang, that B is pin sharp. This photo looks awesome. And I, this is a JPEG, guys. Man. I'm about to get into showing you some other photos that this camera did not necessarily impress me by, but this shot, it makes me feel things about the potential for smartphone photography. The color is great. The balance of exposure is awesome. It's in focus on a very small moving subject. And I feel like this didn't come from a smartphone. Um, it also missed a couple of times, like here. So yeah, this B is out of focus, but that might've been helped with the motion capture and the motion tracking focus features being on and they weren't on. Leica and Xiaomi did a lot of work with this camera's lens to remove as much chromatic aberration as possible. And when I actually look at the edges of the frame, it's not really there. Now let's look at some photos that didn't impress me a whole lot. Here's a bunch of photos of my son. I, he's just sitting on the couch. I kept snapping, hoping, and thinking that all of these would be in focus because the box was on his eyes. It looked like it was tracking properly. And then I look at this photo and he's not in focus at all. And sure, I didn't have those motion tracking features on, but 
In my opinion, I don't think you would even need those if you visually can see in the camera app that the autofocus is supposedly doing its job. It was tracking his eyes. Here's that photo I took in the mall. This is the HDR, just like one click, didn't change exposure at all version. And then here's the one where I actually like lowered the exposure to balance out the highlights. And then you could obviously edit up the whole shot. But yeah, the, the noise in this shot, in the shot, there, it's basically non-existent. Again, this shot has a depth to me that I really, it reminds me of my M10. So this tree is directly backlit. The sun is behind this tree. I went just around the tree enough that it was covering it and impressively, there's no fringing. There's something to this lens design that Leica and Xiaomi have made because I really, really like this. Now, I will say that I do feel like this photo specifically, the HDR effect is a little bit much, but that being said, it doesn't look horrible. It doesn't look, look too over sharpened, though for my taste, it's a little bit over processed. That looks really good. So when you look too closely at these photos, they do start to like feel like a smartphone. Like this shot feels kind of like a smartphone because it's got that kind of HDR feeling to it. That being said, it still did a pretty decent job. So here's like a vibrant, more contrasty, more saturated. And then here's like a authentic. Vibrant makes it feel more like an edited image. And then authentic gives you a flatter, better starting point and then you can edit to be whatever you want. That being said, they both look good. I think the color is exactly what I was seeing when I was outside. So it's very true to life. So whatever Leica and Xiaomi are doing with the color here, top marks. The motion capture and the motion tracking focus clearly helped because a lot of these photos of Riley are in focus when I would have expected them not to be in some of the other photos. Okay, it missed a couple of times. But man, like look, this one, obviously Riley's expression is kind of funny, but like look at how shallow depth th that depth of field is. Looking at these filters, I actually might use the natural one. Again, it's a great flat starting point. The vibrant one is nice. They feel similar. Just say you love the black and white. Like these black and white photos are actually pretty good. Wow, this one of you, Andrew, is not bad. It feels very cool. And then here's our black and white portrait mode shot of Riley looking pretentious. Pretty aggressive cutout, but did a decent job and then it does feel like a little bit too shallow for the depth of him in the frame. Not bad. And then let's see the swirly bokeh effect. This is a really cool effect. The fact that they are able to make this computationally is interesting. I mean, obviously Riley's not super sharp in this photo, so it's you'll lose out on that. But the effect is there. Not quite as good as the real thing, obviously, but convincing enough. And then let's see the, ooh. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this, uh, the dreamy one. It really looks like you got Vaseline on the lens and if you like that look, well, this is for you. This is 4K 30 FPS. Not like game changing, not like best video I've ever seen out of a phone ever, but very solid, sharp, noise is good. Like not, obviously it was a bright scene, but I would review this when I'm 20 years from now and be very happy that I have this. So that's cool. Here's the 8K. It's very sharp, but it looks over-processed. And you can see in his shirt, there's like um, more and like it looks too punchy. I love nature. Like it's trying so hard to keep detail in the shadows. And yeah, the focus doesn't hit every single time, but there's moments where it does a pretty good job. So I would say that's very solid. Here's the 4K. Let's see if it looks much different. Honestly, I think it looks a little bit less over-sharpened. The stabilization is really good. Like it does not feel like I'm just like walking handheld with this phone. Last thing I wanna look at is the slow motion that we did. Oh my God. It's super, super slow, but super artifacty. It looks like a potato shot this. I mean, what are you gonna use this for? Probably nothing. Probably to show your friends. Here's this, <laughs> like on a phone screen, this clip would be awesome. And it looked good when we were outside, but on a computer, it does not hold up. Also, here's the selfie camera performance. I took a selfie of myself when I first opened the phone up and it actually is pretty good. At the end of the day though, what do I think of this? I really like this phone. It is the, one of the best feeling phones I think I felt in a long time. The camera, when it hits focus, is amazing. A couple of weird quirks in terms of the settings, easily fixable, I guess, overall. The future of smartphone cameras is bright, guys. 
I think this goes up to about 1100 USD. That's a very good value to the point where I'd almost consider importing this phone. I think that this is a strong case for phones like this to have a wider release because if every phone's camera becomes this good, we will be in a new world and I wanna see that world. Thank you for watching. If you wanna watch another video about a phone with a one inch sensor, check out my Xperia Pro i video, which unfortunately that camera didn't use the entire one inch sensor that it had in the phone. That's why I feel like this is kind of that perfect blend of performance and sensor size in a smartphone. Thanks for watching.